Do you remember Chia Pets? Chia. Welcome to a little plan chat with your best friend, Betsy Begonia. Today I have like 10 plants that need repotting, so I decided to do a little video, do a little chat, have a little one-on-one -on -one with you, and answer some questions. For example, in the Discord, somebody asked me to differentiate between some more Hoyas, because in my last video, I talked about the difference between Hoya Crimson Queen, Hoya Crimson Princess, and Hoya Australis Lisa, and somebody wanted me to differentiate between like five Hoyas that are also oftenly, oftenly, did I really just say that? I just started this. I'm gonna put this down. All five of these Hoyas are in a section of the Hoya genus called Acanthostemma. All of these have similar attributes, like the flower is fuzzy, the foliage can be quite similar, and so they're often confused with one another, or vendors sell them under the wrong names, or for example, they were published under the, the wrong name in the first place, then it changed like once or twice throughout history, so people still confuse them with one another. You have Hoya bilobata, Hoya dia 70, Hoya tsengii, Hoya bertonia, and Hoya species affinity Bertoni. Okay. I should actually like be repotting at the same time. Like I'm <laughs> I got really focused on the uh, matter at hand and I forgot that this is also a <laughs> repot video. This is my Hoya species affinity Bertonia variegata. I got this in Stockholm in March, 2019. It's basically become so top heavy that it has like pulled itself out of its own little terracotta pot. Yeah. Where am I gonna put this? I never know how to do this when I do this. There are three members of this family that are the most commonly confused with one another, and that is Hoya bilobata, Hoya dia 70, and Hoya tsengii. So dia 70 has pubescent leaves, and that means that they are fuzzy, and Hoya bilobata has glabrous leaves. I hate the word glabrous. I just think that's such a gross word. Yeah. But it means bald. The leaves are bald. They're not fuzzy. So that's the main difference between Dia 70 and bilobata upon first glance. But their flowers are also very different. Bilobata's leaves are also smaller than Dia 70's, and I have learned that it is harder to find a bilobata than it is to find a Dia 70. Nobody is sure if Hoya bilobata is the same as Hoya pantroi or pantroi. We're not sure if that is the same plant or if they are completely different plants. So that adds another layer of confusion. This is not working for me. This is not working for me. Sangii has yellow flowers and lance-like leaves. So the leaves are much longer than Hoya bilobata or Dia 70. To me, it looks like a completely different plant. The reason that it's often confused with Dia 70 is that in the first place, Dia 70 had been misidentified as Hoya tsangii and then it changed over time. Tsangii is also the same plant as Hoya odedia. One was identified by Christina Burton and one was identified by Kloppenberg, but then it was officially decided that tsangii and odedia are the same plant. I hope this is as interesting for you as it is for me. I need to move on to my Hoya Matilde, Matilda, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's in really bad shape. I'm not gonna move it to another pot because I think this pot is a fine size for this plant. The potting mixture that it's in right now is holding too much moisture all the time. <sighs> That's painful for me. That hurts me inside. Oh yeah, the problem is that Dia 70 was originally mislabeled as Hoya Tsangii. Uh, they realized that it was not Hoya Tsangii. So it was given the name DS70, the ascension number in David Silverman's collection where it was. He was the president of the Hoya Society International at the time. So that's why it's called DS70. It stands for David Silverman 70 because it was number 70 in his collection of Hoyas. Now you know. Hoya Bertonia is very similar to Hoya Dia 70, so those two are often mixed up. But from what I have seen, Hoya Bertonia in the midrib of the leaf which is like the center of the leaf near to the edge, it has a little dip in it, whereas Hoya Dia 70 is a completely flat leaf. So that's the difference between the foliage of those two. Also, the flowers of Hoya Bertonia, although they're very similar in appearance to that of Dia 70, they're spread further apart. And Hoya Bertonia is very fuzzy. It's very pubescent, which is also why it's mixed up with Dia 70. It's very fuzzy. So Hoya species affinity Bertonia is recognized as a separate plant from Dia 70, Bilobata, Sangii, etc. It's in the same section. When it was first published, somebody mistook it for Sangii, then they decided that it was DS70, and then it was finally decided that it was a separate species altogether. It's called Hoya species affinity Bertonia because affinity means it bears a strong resemblance to. 
and it bears a strong resemblance to Hoya bertonia, but nobody is sure whether it is or is not Hoya bertonia or whether it deserves its own separate species name. And then what I have over here is Hoya species affinity bertonia variegata, which is the variegated version of Hoya species affinity bertonia. So I asked today on Instagram if anybody has any questions for me that they want me to answer during my plant and chat. I was trying to avoid the subject of the ongoing pandemic, but a lot of people really want to know certain things about how I'm experiencing the situation. So I'll go ahead and answer a couple of questions. How are you staying sane during quarantine? Um, it depends how strictly you define the word sane. I think there have been a couple of moments when I was pretty sure I was going crazy. I already work from home, so I didn't think that much would change for me. I just thought, okay, I'll be home more often than usual. I didn't consider like the impact it would have on me to not be going to the grocery store regularly or not be running errands regularly or for example i usually go to the gym six days a week and i just had no idea like what an effect that would have on me even though like when i go to the gym i don't talk to other people very much like i'm very focused and like you know goal oriented i really am lacking that sense of community like going to the gym and being surrounded by like-minded people and people who you know are part of my personal hobbyist community not having that six days a week i really miss it and i can't wait to go back to the gym <laughs> since i already work from home i have some basic rules that i already abide by number one rule is always make the bed i'm not really a person who lays around in bed for a while i'm kind of like a rocket and the first thing i always do is make the bed number two change out of your pajamas like shower and change out of your pajamas like even if you're not gonna wash your hair like me i only wash my hair every few days still like take a shower <laughs> and change out of your pajamas into your day clothes even though nobody's going to see you it's very important it's just like stepping out of the sleepy time lazy realm into the productive i have shit to do realm number three exercise somebody asked me what are my other hobbies and my other main hobby like my hobby that comes before plans is lifting weights exercise is very important like getting your heart rate up because when you work from home you're sitting around a lot you're not you know you're not very active so it's very important to get your heart rate up for a certain period of the day and then the other important thing is to take breaks and do other stuff even if it's still like productive stuff because when you work from home it, it can be easy to just work for 10 hours to just like sit down and work and to forget to take like official breaks so throughout my day i will take like a 20 minute break to do the laundry or run to the grocery store around the corner run an errand real quick just go outside for a walk or you know do the dishes clean the kitchen something like that just something to break up my day so that I'm not just sitting and working for 10 hours straight. Those are ways that I manage working from home. And so I already had those things in my arsenal before this all happened. How are your plans keeping you sane during quarantine? Uh, they're not, I'm completely out of my mind. No, to be honest, it's just nice to be surrounded. Like I I've taken a lot of time to create my environment, like to create a nice, cozy, tranquil place with the things that I like to see and the stuff that I like to do. Uh, so it's just nice to be surrounded by things that I like to look at, my plants. My advice for somebody who's starting a YouTube channel, do not invest in a bunch of really expensive equipment before you get started. I started on my smartphone, like I would put my smartphone on a small tripod and then I would put a mirror behind it so that I could see the screen and I could make sure that I was in the shot. That's how I started. And then I upgraded to a new smartphone. Then it wasn't until like a year later that I upgraded to a Canon power shot. It wasn't until like two years into having a YouTube channel that I finally upgraded to this, which is a Sony A7 II. That's not even the latest and greatest version of the, there's like a Sony A7 III, right? The most important things are one, lighting. Spend an hour of your life researching lighting. Basic lighting elements at a certain angle will improve your frame and your image vastly. Two, your content needs to be good and interesting. It needs to be something that you are passionate about or something that you're good at. People can tell right away when you are doing something that you're not really passionate about or that you're not very interested in. And then the third thing is discipline because sometimes 
you don't have the motivation, but you need the discipline. Like sometimes I'm not really in the mood to sit down and do a video. I, you know, I'm like not feeling enthusiastic or I'm tired, I didn't sleep well. I have the self-discipline to set up my lights and set up everything. And then once the camera is on, it's like a, a switch is flipped. You just have to have the discipline to get there. And then if it is your passion, that will shine through. Where do you get your energy from? A lot of people have the impression that I am an extrovert because in my videos, I'm like really excited and happy and I love to entertain and, um, actually, in real life, I rather enjoy my alone time. I, <laughs> I'm somebody who spends a lot of time at home and uh, I can go to social events and when I do, I love to entertain people. I love talking to people. I can be like the chattiest caddy in the world, but afterwards I will be very exhausted and I have to withdraw. Like, I couldn't go to a social event every night of the week. I would just be completely exhausted. Will I ever move back to the US and what will I do with my plans if I do? I just don't have plans to do that. What would I do if, I mean, for example, if I had to move back to the US for some reason, like I got deported or something, um, I guess I would give my plants away. I don't know. I'd probably be weird about giving away my rare plants. What is your favorite wine? My favorite wines are like dry white wines from the Alsace region. So did I just say Alsace? From the Alsace region. Uh, so like Riesling, Muscat. I like Sylvana. Speaking of wine, did you know it's Mother's Day? Did you forget? Send your mom a Wink Wine e-card and nobody has to know. If you do not know about Wink Wine Club, why don't I tell you? It's a wine club that offers delivery service straight to your door and wines that are tailored to your personal taste. Stop standing in the grocery store aisle, looking blankly at labels, and choosing a wine based on whether or not it has a silver or gold medal from some wine festival that you've never heard of and have never been to. Not that that's how I shop for my wine. Go to their website, take their little online quiz, and they will tell you exactly which wines you like. If you click the link in my video description before May 16th, you can get 15% off of a three month subscription for your mama. And she can choose her wines based on her personal taste. Nothing says I love you or I totally did not, absolutely didn't forget, like booze. Or, you know, treat yourself. Get that brought up gift certificate for Bath and Body Works and broaden your own palette. Or if you're seeing this video after May 16, 2020, don't worry, I got you covered. There's another link. You can get $20 off your first order at Wink Wine. Join Wink Wine Club. Why did you move to France? A lot of people still ask me this question. I know some of you already know the answer to this because I've answered it in a couple of previous videos, but I understand that everybody has seen all of my videos all the way through, so I'm just gonna answer it real quick like ripping off a band-aid. Oh. In 2011, I moved to France because one of my professors convinced me that I should continue my theater studies in Paris of all places. And I really wanted to live in a foreign country, so I decided to move to Paris. I was an au pair for two years. I did not speak a lick of French when I came to this country. I was an English teacher for a few years, then I did get into a reputable theater school, but after three months I decided I absolutely hated it and I did not want to continue my studies there, so I quit. And then I got a job in a tech startup, which is where I work now, even though it's a big company at this time. I had to change the battery in my camera, so I'm super sorry if the frame is different now. <laughs> Somebody asked me what high school was like. That's a weird question I had never gotten before, but it, it was not ideal. <laughs> I was, a, I was a drama geek. I skipped school a lot. I once had to go to court for truancy because I never went to school. I skipped school all the time. I just really didn't like school. I did very poorly in science and math. I didn't plan to go to college at all. But at the time, uh, the mother of my boyfriend, when I was 17, 18, she sneakily got me like a one day gig at a pop can factory working a 12 hour shift. It was like 18 an hour or something. It was like a lot of money per hour. It was one of the most miserable days of my entire life. It was awful. It was exhausting. It was not a good experience. And I enrolled in college shortly thereafter. So she was a clever woman. She knew how to get me to enroll in school. <laughs> and uh, I'm just checking Instagram to see if there are any last minute questions. Do I have any experiences with hydroculture? No. Life in France, it's good. It's just life, but in another country, that's it. Tell me a dirty secret. Dirty secret? Almost every single day of quarantine, I have made a chocolate mug cake. I finally mastered the art of making like a low fat banana mug cake 
and a low fat chocolate mug cake, but it still has a lot of sugar. So that's my dirty little secret. I've been having a lot of chocolate mug cakes. So I wanna thank you so much for watching. And since I answered your questions, now I have some questions for you to answer down in the comments below. One, how are you staying sane during quarantine? Two, what are your other hobbies outside of plants? Three, I didn't have a three prepared. What is your favorite wine? What is your favorite drink? What is your favorite beverage? Something like that. I didn't have a three prepared. <laughs> Only a two prepared. I don't know why it's three. You can join the Discord if you are interested in an ongoing live chat with other people who have the same interests as us. You and me, we can talk. I'm on there pretty much all day. I would say that that is keeping me sane during quarantine. Like having people to talk to throughout my day that's keeping me sane. If you want to support me in some way, you can. I do have a Patreon account. The link is down below in my description. No obligation, but you are welcome to check it out. And don't forget to check out Wink Wine Club, the sponsor of this video. I think I've had enough wine. Thank you again. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Happy Mother's Day! I would like to thank my $10 patrons Carolyn Green, Chris Litskis, and Jake Hannity, my $6 patron Patty Nash, my $5 patrons Adam Banzov, Awkwardly, Abby Chai Guy, Elizabeth Murray, Aaron Meow, Fenner Lamb, Giselle Dow, Haley, Kayla Mann, Kristen Laughlin, Laura Wright, Michael Beluzzi, Romina Reyes, Shannon Spaniel, and Tanya DeVacan, my $2 patrons Abigail Colin, Adam B, Emma Valentine, Georgia Thomas, Hannah Gukula, Janine Kabirian, Karen, Martha Childers, Pamela, Renee Allen, Steve A, and my $1 patrons Aria Putain and Claire Buck. Claire, Lynn, Denise, Grimm, Elisa, Matiota, Elizabeth, Mary, Elizabeth, Valesquez, Isabel, Langua, Ivy, Dubois, Jesse, JJ, Garibay, Jordan, Jepson, Josie, Kara, Freeman, Kate, Tranter, Kaylee, Davenport, Kristen, Bjorda, Leslie, M, Lexi, Haynes, Linda, Thea, Lisa, Meg, Mega McConville, Melissa Monstera, Michael Miner, Miles Robson, Nicholas Curtis, Simon, Sophia, Sophia, Clark, Valhalla, Fiasco, and Wan Yang Zeng. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Drink responsibly.